Strictly speaking, a vector is just an ordered list of numbers, and vectors can be used to perform all kinds of data analysis in a range of applications, from linguistics to finance. Vectors are typically used by engineers and scientists when working with phenomena such as velocity, acceleration, momentum, force, impulse, weight, electromagnetic fields, and more. A vector can describe anything that has a size, that is, a magnitude, and a direction. Vectors also have important applications in computer science, such as computer graphics, machine learning, and quantum computing. Vectors and calculations involving vectors are the subject of a field of mathematics known as linear algebra. In many scientific and engineering applications, it's particularly useful to visualise a vector as an arrow of a certain length and pointing in a certain direction. For example, this car is travelling in an easterly direction at a constant speed of 20 metres per second. In other words, it has a constant velocity. This car is moving in the same direction, but at 40 metres per second. So the arrow is pointing in the same direction, but the arrow is twice as long. The actual positions of the vectors are not important in this scenario. They are said to be non-localised vectors, or free vectors. A localised vector, also known as a fixed vector, is one in which its position is important. A force acting on a rigid object is a localised vector. When the force is applied, the object might move. This vector has magnitude and direction, but exactly where the force is applied might well have a bearing on how the object moves. A vector must include at least two numbers in order to specify both magnitude and direction. Suppose, for example, that this arrow represents the velocity of an object in an imaginary world where the ground is always flat. In a given amount of time, the object travels a certain distance in the x direction and a certain distance in the y direction. In other words, the object's velocity has an x component and a y component. For convenience, we assume that the tail of the vector is rooted at the origin of a two-dimensional coordinate system. That is, the tail is at position x equals 0 and y equals 0. Hence, the coordinates of the point at the tip of the arrow are the values that constitute the vector. In this case, the tip of the arrow is positioned at x equals 4 and y equals 3. The object is therefore moving at 4 metres per second in the x direction, while also moving at 3 metres per second in the y direction. There are several different notations that can be used to write down a vector. This is one possible notation. A bold italic lowercase letter is the name of the vector, and its value is a vertical list of numbers in square brackets. This is called a column vector. Now, to be clear, these two numbers are not the magnitude and direction of the object's velocity. They are actually just a pair of spatial coordinates that happen to capture this information. We therefore refer to this as a geometric vector. The data can also be written as a row vector, with the numbers listed horizontally. An important notation used in quantum physics and quantum computing is the so-called bra notation, invented by the English physicist Paul Dirac. A bra is a row vector whose name is written within an opening angle bracket and a vertical bar. A ket is a column vector whose name is written within a vertical bar and a closing angle bracket. This notation is used when working with vectors that represent the angular momentum of subatomic particles, otherwise known as spin. But that's another story. We'll stick with simple column vectors for now. Here's a different column vector, perhaps representing the velocity of a different vehicle. Clearly, it has a different size, that is, it has a different magnitude, 
and it points in a different direction. And here's another, and here's another, and another. Every possible velocity in this imaginary two-dimensional world, that is, every possible vector of this particular type, is a member of a so-called vector space. To put it another way, every possible vector in this vector space is a member of a set of vectors called capital R superscript 2. The letter R stands for real numbers because each vector is a list of real numbers and the 2 is the number of dimensions or the number of values in each list. If you think about it, there are an infinite number of vectors possible in this vector space because there are an infinite number of different lengths possible pointing in an infinite number of different directions. But these vectors are all the same because they all have the same magnitude and they all point in the same direction. Any two free vectors with the same length and that are parallel to each other can be considered identical. When it comes to geometric vectors, the two numbers tell us only the change in x and y from the start of the arrow, not where the start of the arrow actually is. After all, these cars are all in different places, but they're all travelling at the same velocity. You can think of each free vector as having its own coordinate system. But different vectors are easier to compare when they are rooted in the same coordinate system. Vectors with a small angle between them can be thought of as being similar to each other. The smaller the angle, the greater the similarity. Vectors with a large angle between them can be thought of as being dissimilar to each other. The bigger the angle, the greater the difference. Vectors at right angles to each other, or to use the correct terminology, orthogonal vectors, are theoretically unrelated. The amount of similarity or dissimilarity between two vectors can be calculated by multiplying them together in a special way. More about that later. Vectors can also be used to describe magnitude and direction in three-dimensional space. The tip of this arrow is at coordinates x equals 7, y equals 3 and z equals 2, assuming that it starts at coordinates 0, 0, 0. So the vector can be written as a column of three numbers. All of the possible vectors in three-dimensional coordinate space are members of a set called R superscript 3. Again, there are an infinite number of vectors possible in a three-dimensional coordinate system. Finally, it's worth bearing in mind that vectors are not just for scientists and engineers. Here are some data about the heights and weights of a group of people. The information about each person includes a pair of values. In other words, the information about each person has two dimensions. Each pair of values can therefore be treated as a vector, and these vectors can be plotted on a graph. Every possible combination of height and weight, that is, every possible vector of this particular type, is a member of a vector space. And, of course, there are infinite possibilities. As before, each vector in this vector space can be represented with an arrow. Although these height and weight vectors have no real direction per se, we can nevertheless get a sense of the orientation of one vector with respect to another. Vectors with a small angle between them are similar and those with a large angle between them are dissimilar. Orthogonal vectors are, theoretically, unrelated. This type of pattern recognition is not only valuable for statisticians, it has important applications in the field of machine learning. In the next video, we'll look at some of the calculations that you can perform with vectors and why you might do them.